And yes, finally the crank is back from my crop polishing and we're gonna check it, we're gonna unwrap it, of course. Here it is, we're gonna see how good it looks and it's ready. And I've obviously get the assembly lube on the block on the main bearings, drop in the crank, assemble the bottom end, and even install the pistons. So you know you're gonna assemble this with us. And then of course, stretch the rod bolts as it wants, as it's suggested by ERP, check the valve to valve, and so that we can get the safety window on the adjustments and of course clay test so yeah And first things first, here's our new page. It has 500 likes and about 800 followers. So we got to keep pushing for that because our old page, I don't get to use it anymore. It's dormant because I got lost with the access because my Facebook account got hacked. Here we have port work, the prices, the engine labor, even ECU tuning and all the other stuff. So it's a good thing to check because the general prices are there. And of course, it's going to be good. We even posted all the stuff that we do, including this engine here. We just posted the details there. Check all the valves that we ordered because we use SuperTech. And of course, we even shared the talked about core shifts and talk about the changes in each port. So, you know, I'll wait for you guys there, all right? Okay, now the crankshaft is back from being micro polished. Yes, sir. There, it's all wrapped up. So, okay, we gotta wrap this to check everything. And then, of course, we gotta continue assembling the bottom end and then the whole thing including the head right all right oh yeah the journals look good so now this is gonna be 0 0.0016 clearance on the mains and on the rod is 0 0.0018 all right okay, now assembly loop of course on the ACL race bearings get the thrust washers in and then of course let's check it out oh yeah all right now it's ready to be fully assembled okay now let's get the main caps on assembly loop first there okay start with hand tightening the mains just so that it's snug and fit before we go to step one okay now here we are with step one, 18 feet pounds torque. Okay, now we're gonna we're not gonna time lapse this. This is gonna be quick. Yes. All right, now the second step is 56 feet pounds torque. Yeah, now clicking is louder now. You can hear it, right? All right. Now, okay, we're gonna time lapse this because it's gonna take a while. Okay, there you go. Now we turn it, oh, you see that? That is light. You can see, I can turn to just, actually with just my fingers, look. Let's look at this, it's turning lightly, right? Okay, now here. I mean, look, just with my fingers. Yes, this is gonna be running really good. Now it's about just right on how you turn it or how light it turns. Okay, now let's turn the block around. Now let's go with the pistons. But one thing worth mentioning, on the SRD page, I got this message or this DM from Dwight and look, he says, he used the information from the YouTube channel or our YouTube channel on his brother's car that ran 12.62 seconds. That's fast. On a stock K24 that made 216 horsepower. But it ran really good, right? But then this was a street tune or road tune. And then he said on the dyno, they pulled, where is it? There. 
229 wheel horsepower. Oh, this is gonna probably run even faster now. And here they have a Instagram page. This is his, this is the shop. Rad's tuning. These boys are these guys are from Jamaica, and this actually just makes me really really glad because the the whole point of the YouTube channel or this channel that we did is of course to advertise my shop, right? But also to share the stuff that people don't usually share. So this is really good. So the boys from Jamaica, come on, keep up with doing the good work. You guys are doing awesome, man. This, this is really cool to see. Okay, now we start with spraying it with WD-40 just to make sure it's clean and there's no flash rust. And wipe, we wipe the boards off with a shop towel or paper towel. Okay, we're there. Okay. We wipe it clean. And honestly, the WD-40 for me is enough lubrication when installing the piston rings. Well, the pistons with the rings, all right? Okay, now let's go to the workbench and get the pistons. Here it is. They're all ready. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now let's go with piston number one. Install it. We're going to time lapse this so it doesn't take too long. Then the rad cap. And then just hand tight. We will stretch the rod bolt later. Okay, there you go. Okay, we'll get ready. Piston number two is next. There you go. All right. And rod cap and the ERP loop there. Yep, my colleague is also busy doing his own stuff there. All right. Number three now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Getting there. Okay. Now, lastly, or finally, number four. Yep. Okay, that's it. Now, wait. Hand tight this. And let's see how it turns. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we get the stretch gauge on. And look at here. Okay. Now it's on zero. Okay. Now it's all ready to be torqued up. Wait, let me grab my torque wrench. And now here, as you can see, let's look at it. Yes, 0 0.050 stretch. Okay, this is what ERP suggests. Okay, this is good. And so here's the bottom end all assembled, looking really good, right? Oh, yeah. And the one up pistons, the dome is just, well, you know, it's just bling, bling. All right, now here. Let's get the block right side up. Let's turn it. And you can hear it. You can hear the brand new piston rings sli sliding or riding through the freshly honed block. Oh, this sounds really good. And you can see it spins quite light. You know, it turns quite light. Even though with all the four pistons installed, it turns quite light. And actually, you know, there's something wrong with the bottom, man. You would actually feel it when you're turning it like this. It, there will be areas that's kind of like stiff or turns hard, not lightly, and you would know. So now let's go back to the workbench and look at the head. And now here we are. And you see that like button? Hit the like button if you're enjoying this video before we get to the valve to valve checking or checking the valve to valve. Because that helps the algorithm spread the video out. So hit the like button, alright? And of course, subscribe if you haven't, so we can grow the community here as we will continue to share all the good stuff and all the work that we do at the shop just for you guys. So hit the bell notification for that too, all right? Okay, let's continue. Okay, we assembled ahead just the chamber number one with the two intakes and two exhaust valves on just checking springs and stock retainer. This way, it's going to be soft or not too hard when you turn it. Of course, you can choose put stock but still softer but of course the checking spring is way way softer it's easier okay so here we got the cam gears on the golden eagle cam gears they're both set at zero this way we're going to check the valve to valve distance initially on how it is on zero zero All right we're going to strap on the belt and then vice grip it here, look at the filler gauge. We got ready in the 21 and 20, so that's 41, and then 21 and 22, so that we can go 0 0.043 and check on that. Okay, now here we are, chamber number one, so it's 0 0.041, all right? Check it. 
the between the valve to valve. There. Oh no, it's my hand is covering that. Sorry about that. Not affecting the focus. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's try it again here. Look. Okay, that one goes through well. And it, it's always like that. One side is a bit looser than the other, but you know, you have to check both. So there. So now let's switch to 0 0.021 and 22. This way it's 0 0.043. All right. Okay, now let's check this. Check the valve to valve distance. It still passes, but it kind of catches a bit. And here it still passes. So zero zero is actually really, really safe. So, okay, now we know that. So now here, checking valve to valve like this, even clay testing and also degreeing, we're checking the VTEC lobes. So obviously the VTEC is locked. So we'll eventually make a good video about locking VTEC for the B series and the D series. So wait on that, all right? So now let's head back to the block. I wanna talk about something. And as you notice, we always make sure the bearing clearances are good because that's so that it will turn or run good, right? So you can see, you can picture the pistons here running. And of course you can see, you can see the oil drain here, right? And that is why we have to always Put, or we actually choose to put extra breather fittings on the block. This way crankcase pressure doesn't build up because it may help or it may hinder oil drain from the valve cover itself. And that's when you start spewing oil. So we did talk about that extensively, extensively on the membership only video and about this one. Let me show you here now, hold on. Okay, here, visualize this with me for a while. Okay, so imagine piston number one fires, right? So it's, in, it's making power, so it pushes down and up, okay, and then exhaust blows out in the exhaust, right? So we, we turn it once again. That's how it cycles, right? Like one, three, four, two, the firing order. So imagine if the piston number fires like this, this three here is actually uh, luggage or weight. It's weight being carried by the piston number one to, until the, you finish the cycle. This means it's added weight for the for the piston number one, meaning it's consuming horsepower. That's like windage losses because it loses power. It's like added windage. Okay, maybe not lose power, but it eats up power that you produce. So your total production is less. So having not enough or not good enough clearance that doesn't pull nicely, that's like your piston number one that's firing is making good power, but it, ha it's ha it has extra load, so it doesn't reflect into being a power maker it's actually the power is consuming itself you know so this is actually an ex extensively extensively talked about video on the membership only section so when it's ready you guys can check it and by the time other people get to see this video a few months later the membership only videos are have been up and good so just keep going going there and you'll see this main talk that we're having there all right now, since the Skunk 2 intake manifold, the Skunk 2 Pro Series is done porting, we're gonna assemble it and send it off to Edmel for TIG welding and getting it ready, and then we're gonna finish it up. And of course, as soon as the water pump comes in, we can start reassembling the head on the belt, well, on the block with the belt and clay test. And of course, eventually, we will degree the 403. So you can click here, it's done.